This video is sponsored by Raycon. Shocking, I know. Their everyday earbuds are more tasty and moist than they've ever been. If your ears had taste buds, they'd be like... They're still my earbuds of choice for when I'm out running due to their being sweat and water resistant. And their optimised gel tips let them fit perfectly and comfortably in your ears and keeps them from falling out during the stresses of exercise. They'd probably stay in during sex. I haven't tested that because that would be kind of rude, but you go ahead, let me know how it goes. You could even use them to get off to your weird sex playlist without driving your girlfriend mad for two years. Seriously, what the hell was this guy thinking? They offer 8 hours of playtime and the charging case holds up to 32 hours of battery life. Not that you'll need all that during the sex. Easy to use touch controls allow you to do everything with them except the kitchen sink. You know, if you're into that. And they offer excellent noise isolation so I can focus on the music, but I can also easily switch to its awareness mode if I'm ever worried about getting hit by a bus. All this and more for half the price of other premium audio brands? Get in there, son! So click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash cynical reviews to get 15% off your order and help support the channel. And your ears. And your sex life. Big thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members for helping me make videos. More information on how you can support and the benefits of doing so at the end. Also join the Discord, it's fun. One of the things I hate most about streaming services is how their need to push out as much content as possible in order to attract new subscribers and retain existing ones leads to great media with real artistic value being buried amidst all the sludge that gets pumped out on the daily. And even if it does manage to attract people's attention and get viewed, it soon gets pushed out of their consciousness by all the other content being consumed. Meaning that few things that are being produced have true staying power. And you know what, I do think that overall there is more good stuff being produced nowadays than at any other period in history. It's just that there's also more bad and boring stuff being produced along with it, which drowns out the good stuff and leads us to be cynical. Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! But the good stuff is there, you just have to rummage around a bit to find it. So I'd like to take a break from my usual relentless negativity to shed some light on a hidden gem that is certainly worth the rummage. Lost Ollie, a four-part miniseries produced by Netflix that was released a few weeks ago. I've seen very little buzz around this show, except for trailers on Netflix itself, and I'd never have even heard of this show if my girlfriend hadn't told me about it. It's a damn shame, and one I'd like to remedy. It's based on the book Ollie's Odyssey by American author William Joyce, who has been heavily involved in a number of animated projects, including Robots, Epic, and Rise of the Guardians, as well as creating the shows Roly Polioli and George Shrinks both of which I occasionally watched when I was younger, by some weird coincidence, and directed by Peter Ramsey, who co-directed the best Spider-Man movie. Spider-Man Twitter might hate me for saying that, but I really don't give a shit. The plot follows the titular Ollie, a homemade stuffed bunny who wakes up in a thrift store, having lost his memory and been separated from his best buddy, Billy. Grasping at straws based on clues gathered from the fragments of his memory, he embarks on an epic adventure to find Billy. Accompanied by an Elvis-inspired clown doll named Zozo, who despairs at having lost someone special of his own. And a rambunctious, ramshackle and deeply troubled teddy bear named Rosie, who was herself abandoned and with whom Zozo has a strained relationship. The story features many twists and turns and ups and downs, and everything comes together in the last episode. Leaving us with a fantastic payoff and a satisfying and emotional conclusion that'll hit you right in the feels. A conclusion so fulfilling and cathartic that I had to watch it again twice just to experience that feeling again. Ha! Gay! I really don't want to go into details or spoilers in this review because I want you guys to actually go and watch it for yourselves and I don't want to ruin that experience for you. Which is going to limit exactly what I can talk about, but I hope that I can at least convey a sense of how good this show is and whet your appetite for more. Now, you could dismiss the basic premise and go, that's just Toy Story. You could. You could also shut up and go fuck yourself. Lost Dolly puts an interesting, refreshing, and surprisingly dark spin on the lost toy finding its way home trope. It turns what could have been just another iteration of a familiar story into something truly unique and special. And not just special in the way every mum thinks their kid is special. It's classified as a children's show, and technically it is, but I hesitate to label it as such. Sure, it's family friendly in the sense that there's no gore or naked honking mommy milkers to scar the kiddies, but it still goes to some pretty dark places at times. The series explores themes like memory, loss, abandonment, grief, bitterness, loneliness, death, and the importance of home and family. 
Having these themes in a kid's story is by no means a bad thing, but you might want to watch it with them in order to help them process what they're experiencing. I'd put it somewhere between Toy Story and Coraline in terms of its suitability for young kids. And let's be honest, the Toy Story movies had some pretty messed up stuff in them as well. So if you were thinking of just sticking your kids in front of the screen for a few hours while you go into the other room to jerk off, maybe don't do that with this one? Unless you want those kids to be traumatised. But if you're an adult, there's still plenty of reason to give this your time. To just put this in a box as a kids show would be wrong. I truly believe it transcends that category in the way any good Pixar movie does. I think you'll be surprised by how dark it gets. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, Lost Ollie is pretty fucking sad. I shed a few tears through some of the more emotional moments, and if you haven't cried at least once before the end, you're a fucking sociopath who shouldn't be trusted around children. And don't act like you don't ever cry. Come on, you're not impressing anyone. Just let it out. It's healthy. Lost Ollie is much more gritty and grounded than something like Toy Story, right down to its visuals and the choice of rundown locations, which serve to reinforce and convey the story's themes. It's truly an emotional roller coaster, especially in the last episode. The script, the backbone of this entire experience, is superbly written. The first episode, I admit, does start off somewhat slow, but bear with it because I would argue that the slower setup is necessary and the show does get better from there. Lost Ollie is also very good at misdirection, causing you to expect something when actually something else is the case. It offers hints about upcoming plot twists that you might not notice at first to make for strong foreshadowing in retrospect, but aren't so strong that those twists are eye-rollingly obvious. The decision to go for a miniseries format instead of trying to condense everything into a feature length of 90 minutes to 2 hours means that there's more time for build-up and character development, which makes the eventual payoffs even more satisfying. Honestly, it feels like the perfect length and doesn't overstay its welcome, which in this age of frequent bloat and padding is much appreciated. But what is here was so good that when it was over, I wanted more. But sometimes, less is more. At least, that's what I tell the ladies, anyway. Even the best written script has to be brought to life, and the performances are for the most part excellent, especially the voice actors. There are some minor exceptions to this, but not enough to bring down the quality as a whole. Ollie himself is voiced by Jonathan Groff, who you might know as Kristoff in Frozen, King George in Hamilton, or Holden in Mindhunter. He's unrecognisable here though, and his performance goes a long way to making this innocent and determined little toy both sympathetic and endearing. Mama was right. He ain't nothing but a pissant in a pit bull's body. Are those lightsabers? Are you a Jedi? How'd you get lightning on your eyes? Falls off. You can't trust this old world, Ollie. You can trust me. Mary J. Blige brings enough tortured confidence and humanity to Rosie that you just want to reach out and hug her through the screen. I'm Ollie. I need hugs and constant attention. I'm jealous of what a great pirate Rosie is because my ears are stupid. I was worried. You just left. I didn't want you to. Nina's lost, but you don't have to be. Because I'm here with you. True friends, more than true friends. You could be my snow day. Gina Rodriguez and Jake Johnson also do a great job as Billy's parents, carrying us through heartwarming moments of bonding and heartbreaking moments of tragedy. It almost makes up for him voicing the main character in Hoops. Oh, fuck you! It's not my fault that the hamster that you tied to a string and shoved up your ass chewed off the string, and now you're standing there with a piece of string, but the hamster's eating away at the inside of your asshole. Almost. And Kesla Talbot is also pretty good as Billy, and I usually hate young actors. But I have to single out Tim Blake Nelson's performance as Zozo as particularly masterful. Don't you have somebody you love? Somebody that you'd do anything to be with? Yes. And she's gone! I looked for years, Ollie. Searching high and low. And you know what I found? Nothing. I'm done searching for things I can't find. And these characters are complex enough and given enough development to make you truly empathise with them and get you invested in what happens to them, which is a personal pet peeve of mine in any story. And despite its grimy and dark aesthetic, Lost Ollie is a visual treat. Not necessarily in the sense that it's going to blow your mind with spectacular imagery, as with something like The Sandman, but rather that its visuals are well executed and suited to their intended purposes within the context of this story and the emotions that it's trying to convey. 
The character designs for the toys are unique and interesting, cute when they need to be, but capable of conveying emotion, pain, or threat when the situation calls for it. The animation is fluid and looks great. Of course, you'd expect nothing less from industrial light and magic. The CGI characters are well integrated into the live-action footage, an impressive feat in and of itself. The only exception I noticed was in one scene when it was raining, the raindrops didn't seem to interact with the characters at all, neither being absorbed or bouncing off them or anything like that. It was the only time I got taken out of the experience enough to remember that I was watching something artificial, which is unfortunate and I assume that it was done to reduce costs and workload. But honestly, this scene hits so hard that you probably won't notice or give a shit. The cinematography is also excellent. The series has no right to look as good as it does. Although hardly one of Lost Ollie's strong points, the music is serviceable. I probably wouldn't listen to the score outside of the context of this show, but it fittingly accompanies what's happening on screen and helps get across whatever emotion you're supposed to be feeling at the time. It does what it's meant to do. Although one song in particular is used both as a plot device and to reinforce the story's ultimately hopeful and optimistic message. I can't play it because music companies tend to be arseholes about copyright, even when fair use obviously applies. Seriously, music companies fuck you and go fuck yourself. But it's a good cover of a classic and makes the ending over which it plays that much more of a tearjerker. Now, if it's one point of criticism I do have, it's the veracity of the accents. Lost Ollie is set in Kentucky, and of course I'm hardly an expert in regional American accents, but it does seem to be a common complaint that the southern accents aren't authentic to this region. If we're gonna do this, partner, we gotta figure out a way out of here first, don't you think? I don't mean to make no trouble, but I just can't leave here till my sign is up in your window. I almost lost my star because of you. Pirates don't play fair. Everybody knows that. Which is a shame, if true. It's the kind of attention to detail that I really appreciate when it's done right. In its defense, I will say that the actors do at least hold their accents consistently, so that isn't an issue. It never approaches like Dick Van Dyke in Mary Poppins levels of Oi Mary Poppins! Like, you know, that, that kind of stuff. So for the vast majority of people, it won't even be an issue at all. Oh, and there is some inconsistency with when the humans are able to notice the toys being alive and when they aren't. There are times when they run around in front of lots of people and no one notices or cares. It's a bit weird. They don't really explain how it works. The best conclusion I could come to is that only humans who truly believe that toys are alive can see them moving. Basically, if you don't believe in it, you don't see it. Which is why children and Billy's mother can interact with Ollie, but other humans can't. It's more of a personal nitpick and doesn't ruin the story, but I would have liked to have seen this been made clearer and more consistent. I would, however, urge you to look past these issues and suspend your disbelief and appreciate what's on offer here. It's tragic, heartbreaking, beautiful, and ultimately, very human. Anyone who's lost someone close to them can't fail to be affected by this story. It never shies away from being harrowing and brutal, and employing writing and imagery that will stay with you long after the credits roll. It made me think back to the toys I used to play with as a kid and what they meant to me. I don't know, I just... I just got all warm and fuzzy. It's just nice to be able to gush over something good for once. Uh, oh, oh, I think I'm gonna be sick. <clears throat> okay, I think I've tickled this show's prostate for long enough. The point is, go watch it. At about 2 hours and 40 minutes total runtime, you can comfortably watch it in an evening. If you have even a passing interest based on what I've said, or you still have an inner child that you listen to, you'll very much enjoy this. Netflix have put out so much shit over the last few years, or even this year alone, that it's nice to see them distributing a good project as well. They need to do more of this. And I think we owe it to ourselves in these shitty and disappointing times with so much shitty and disappointing content to enjoy what good art is being made. It cleanses our palates and reminds us that not all is bad. So turn down the lights, make some popcorn, stack up a few boxes of tissues. People are going to think we spend the whole time wanking. And let Lost Ollie make you feel all the feels for an evening. You won't regret it, unlike the rest of your life decisions. Hey folks, hope you enjoyed this video for what it is. I'm currently working on a review of the Bible Man franchise, and that's going to be a much bigger project than I'd anticipated. So I figured I'd make something shorter and more upbeat in the meantime just to tide you over. And yeah, it's nice to talk about something good for once, and to bring attention to worthy projects as well as talk shit about bad ones. And sometimes I want to talk about something without going balls to the wall with a long video. So if you like this form of shorter content and videos highlighting positive things, let me know in the comments and I'll make more even when the mood strikes. 
follow me on my social media and join my public Discord server. Links to everything is down in the description. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.